Hello, chummers! Welcome back to another episode of Smash Keys Plays Shadow Run Returns. Actually, maybe I should get comfortable so I'm not moving around too much for the microphone. Welcome back. I haven't played Shadow Run in a while. I recorded a whole bunch last time, and I'm hoping to record a whole bunch this time. Unless we're getting close to the end, because I feel like we're getting pretty close. Maybe there'll be other, some other quests, other stuff to do, you know? I'm hoping. You know, here's hoping, right? But the um the community driven maps look like they're going to be fun. So I mean, I could probably sit there and do that for forever, right? But we're going to get this quest done. This main mission, saving Sam Watts or no. Bringing him justice. Smash keys justice. The brutish dog-eat-dog existence of a slum dweller is a far cry, far cry from the desperation and existential nothingness of corporate wave slave. Yet, after your time at the terrestrial industries, it's unclear which is more bleak. The elevator rises smoothly, its blunderized music assaulting you once again, and you ascend to the executive floor. And your goal. So, we last left off. We kind of putzed around at night, killed a bunch of people, and then all of a sudden, hey, you know what's a good idea? Smash Key should stay here and pretend he's a janitor. Again. Second time I'm a janitor, but that's okay. So now I'm heading up, planted some evidence, and I was like, hey, uh, so-and-so, um, maybe you should uh, work on your security. Look at dead bodies everywhere. Hello? My name is Smash Keys. I'm the janitor. Hey, this is a restricted area. I'm sorry, sir. Let's maybe not upset everybody. So we're going to go talk to, the, I think, the chief of security? Hello? Hello? Eric Silverstar. There you are. It seems that some of my mess are letting me down, and it's good to see you're displaying one of the most important of my three key values. What? What? It's duty above all, right? He laughs. Well, yes. That is the first value, and I'm glad more... Oh man, why can I not read today? I'm glad more than those outside of security follow it from janitor, no less. No, I'm speaking of my third and final value of vigilance, which seems to be sorely lacking around you. Uh, we prefer building maintenance, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, rewards and punishments must be given where required. Now please, start filling out the report on the data pad, and I'm afraid I must ask you not to sit in my chair given your attire. I need to go ahead downstairs and investigate your findings. I'll be right back. Baron Samdi, your comm link begins to ring. You pick up. So, these paintings must be what all those expensive deliveries were. We don't have much time. I'm tracking Silverstar and he is already stepping off the elevator. He's quick. I don't think your disguise will hold up much longer. I'll update you on his movements. Hurry, mon ami. I'll sit, in, I'm not sit in this chair. I'll sit in this chair all I want. Sit in my chair. Uh, this painting. This shows a profile of three elves in Telestrian security uniforms looking upwards at a flag flying the Telestrian logo. The plaque reads duty. Push the frame. Up. Frame clicks. And then, what? Over here? Depicted is a clock tower. At a train station in downtown Portland in the tier in the tier. The plaque reads efficiency. Push the frame. Up. Oh. He has a few guard <laughs> He has a few guards, a tech worker, and a very nervous wage slave gathered in the boardroom and is beginning to question them. Okay, well, I'm gonna go touch another painting. Uh, this is a photorealistic painting of Five massive harvesters in telestrian colors in a staggered formation cutting a swath across a rippling field of wheat. The plaque reads unity. Push the frame. Okay. Uh, there's an open bottle of expensive scotch and a single glass that appears to be half empty and half smoked cigar. Okay, so done. It's a puzzle. Yeah, push the frame. Nope. Oh. He's finished interviewing a Matrix tech and is now talking sternly to a pair of guards. Okay, well, I've got, I better hurry. Okay, touch. Yeah, push the frame. Okay, and then let's just try this one. Just brute force. 
Yep, push this one. Nope, of course. Okay. Dang it. He's now talking to the wage slave. This is not going well. They're raising their voices. Okay, well, come on. I'm trying. I'm trying. Samdi, you didn't talk. Okay, every single time. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna push this one. Push the frame. And then maybe this one. Push the frame. Yep. And then finally, maybe this one. Okay, I can't go yet. So I'm gonna try this one. I'm gonna try it. I'm good. Gamble. I think I can just walk through. Beautiful. Touch all of the things. There is a safe that has a large DNA scanner on the front. Most likely keyed to Mr. Silverstar. Okay, well, let's go touch a cigar. Let's just touch all the things. Come on, smash keys. We gotta get this done. Man, I'm so scared. I feel so naked without my guns and my partners. Open a bottle of scotch. Pick up the half-smoked cigar. Woo! Touch. Uh, put the moist end of the cigar on the DNA scanner. With a click and a faint hiss of escaping air, the safe opens. Take the sample. Great work, mon ami. The time for stealth is past. It has set off every alarm in the system, but I have unlocked the executive elevator and your path is clear. Head to the elevator and make your escape. Okay. Run to the ex executive elevator. Sorry, ladies and gents. I'm just a janitor passing by. Don't, don't bother me. Don't worry about it. I belong here. I work here. Is there anything I can touch? Touch, touch, touch. No? Okay. You know, running by, steal an expensive bottle of scotch or something. <clears throat> Beautiful. Oh, hello. Detective McCluskey stands smirking, surrounded by armed and twitchy Lone Star officers. Good morning, moron! Good morning, Detective McCluskey. It's a fine day for police corruption, isn't it? The smirk broadens. That's right, dummy. Keep flopping your jaw. That sort of thing will get you. Will be perfect for where, where you're going. Where am I going? <laughs> Let's not do that. Mr. Telestrian wants to meet you in person. He wants to chat about last night's fun and games. You can come along quietly, or you can meet him in a body bag. He smiles wolfishly. Come on, Drek for Brains. Make the wrong choice. <laughs> All up for stand-up conversation. Damn, I was hoping to be able to bring you in feet first. Not gonna search me though, right? Not gonna rum rummage through my pockets. The estate. From the floor of the Lone Star Cruiser, you watch the tops of the downtown quarters offices building disappear, replaced by gray overcast over the I-90 bridge. The nylon restraints binding your wrists and ankles along with McCluskey's whistling to the radio make for an unpleasant ride. A half hour later, the cruiser hits a whisper-smooth patch of road and a magnificent mansion fills your view. Its design is a blend of old, world finery and elfish grace. The car pulls to an abrupt halt and you're dragged onto the driveway where McCluskey pulls a nasty-looking knife and cuts your bonds. You look up to see the surra you're surrounded by a squad of green-clad ghosts, special forces troops from Tier Tangier. Massaging the feeling back into your numb extremities, you prepare to meet the man himself, James Telestrian III. Hmm. McCluskey? Why you do this? Why you do this, McCluskey? McCluskey smirks. Want some advice, moron? Of course you don't. You're a shadow runner and live by your own rules, don't you? Well... I can take advice here and there. I suggest you keep your smart-ass remarks to yourself this time, human. Mr. Telestrian isn't some street meat you can impress or intimidate. He's the brains behind the throne of Tier Tangier and one of the richest men in Seattle. He holds your leash, right, McCluskey? You his lapdog. Richard and Hell Elves take a dump the same way I do, McCluskey. Both poop with the butts. In toilets. Well, maybe he poops in something different. His eyes widen, his smirk gets even broader. That's the right attitude, Chummer. You're just the same as Mr. Telestrian. Yes, you are. The only difference is that you got no money and you got no power. So tell me again, Direct for Brains. What is it you got? Indigestion. You're dumber than I thought. Enjoy your chat. I'll dispose of your body later. Hey, Mr. Quoth. 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 Oh. Little 
fancy little mustache you got there. The fussy elf with air of a Victorian butler studies you before he speaks. He doesn't like what he sees. Mr. Telestrian is expecting you. You will find him in his office. He's a butler. Thank you, Jeeves. He's not amused. Delighted to be of service. You may wait here for a few moments to gather yourself before you enter Mr. Telestrian's office. Some people find that they need time to prepare themselves for a meeting of an elf of his stature. However, the upstairs is off limits to you and the library is occupied at the moment. Do not tarry, though. Mr. Delestrian is not one to be kept waiting long. Well, that nice. I'm getting the heck out of here, though. Okay, well. Alright. Ooh, what a beautiful, beautiful mansion. Hello there. Algeron. Hey, I know you. There's a twinkle in Algeron's eye that wasn't there when you spoke at the seamstress's union. It is good to see you again. There's much to do. How are you doing here? I am doing what I do, Smash Keys, providing those in need with the tools they require. Seek me out after you have spoken to James Telestrian. Perhaps I can be of service again. Okay, well, I can't go upstairs, right? Nope, no upstairs. Can't go in the library. Hmm. I should get a less clicky mouse, because I feel like a lot of clicking. So the trick is to not being uh, intimidated by anyone, is not know who they are. Looks like uh, Deckard, right? With elf ears. As you approach James Telestrian the three looks up from the computer screen built into the surface of his desk and assesses you. Calculating cold, a practiced smile comes to his face. He vibes the kind of rich you don't get from a trivet. It's not the clothing or the trappings or the bow before your betters mansion. It's something else, the feeling that you're being categorized as a resource or a liability or a pawn. James Telestrian, I've been reviewing the results of your visit to my Seattle office last night. I admit they are impressive. Yeah, I kill a lot of your people. You have generated a considerable amount of damage to my office complex, killed or wounded many of my security personnel, and cost my vice president of security his job. In 24 hours, you have accumulated quite a, quite a bill with me, sir. How do you intend to settle your debt? You take a check. You already confiscated the container I took. I have no other bargaining chips. Etiquette. Once my current assignment is complete, I would be happy to discuss working off my debt to you, Mr. Telestrian. That discussion may happen one day, assuming the outcome of this conversation does not result in your immediate termination. When one is in my debt, they remain in my debt until such a time that I decide that debt is repaid. There will be no negotiation on that point. However, you have one piece of information which you might use as a bargaining chip in the little time you have left to live. Why you took what you took. I am interested to know why you and your team of criminals fought your way through my security teams, up to my private offices, office, to assess the matrix, to access the matrix, and uncover the location of a simple research project. Um, the most protected item is usually the most valuable, that's why I took it. It goes like this. Your half-brother, Sam Watts, hired me to find his own killer. He had a dead man switch. When I find the killer, I get paid. That's fine with that. You impress me, sir. My father's bastards are intentionally not well known, even to themselves. Nevertheless, I fail to see the connection between this Sam Watts' death and a raid on one of my office buildings. There is no connection between the research project and the dead man that I am aware of. Well, if you must know, Sam was killed by your half-sister, Jessica. Jessica is a protected by giant bugs. Aegis kills giant bugs. Kill the bugs. Kill Jessica. Get paid. I find your bluntness somehow refreshing. He touches a button on the desk, and I die. Mr. Quoth, please ask my daughter to join us. Hey! The young pretty elf has dark circles under her eyes and a haunted expression on her face. She recognizes you instantly. It's you! You're the man who helped me escape from the Universal Brotherhood. How did you get there? Here. Telestrian cuts in quickly. Thank you, Mary Louise. You have confirmed the identity of your rescuer and given me the reason to forgive him for his trespasses against me. Well... See what you get, right? You're nice to people, you're nice to pretty ladies, and sometimes the pretty ladies turn out to be a, an old man's daughter. Hmm? Doesn't kill you right off the bat. Be nice to everyone, especially pretty ladies. She looks hungry for your help. I'm, she looks hungry for you? Yeah, she looks hungry for my help. I'm glad you're here. 
Good to see you got it out okay, Mary Lewis. You did well back there. Without you, we'd all be dead. She closes her eyes. Thank you, but I'm not sure that death wouldn't be better than this. I can't sleep at all. I'm afraid that this is a dream and that I'll wake up and still be there with the bugs. Yeah, the people bugs. You can relax, Mary Lewis. You are safe. It is over. No, it won't be over till they're all dead. She shudders. You didn't see them. You don't understand. You and those men, you flew in here. All you do is talk. It's just like you... It's just like you to form a committee, father. I knew that someone had to take action. That's why I got Harkeem involved. The already cold exterior of James Telestrian turns to ice. I see. It was you and your crippled little friend who leaked Aegis to this man. We will speak of it later, in private. Now then, Smash Keys, there are people I wish you to meet. The committee, my daughter alluded to. This is a rare opportunity for a man of the street just as yourself. I urge you to behave. We will adjourn to the library. I would be delighted. Right. I don't know if that is sarcasm or not. Just behave. I don't know what to do. Smash keys. Superhero. Guy with a gun. There's a weight in Telestrian's library, a sense of magnitude and of purpose. There are no... You are no longer in the presence of mere wealth. You are in the presence of history. Hello? Uh, Green Goblin? How are you doing? It's like, uh, yeah, that's, uh, there's the Hobgoblin. There's, uh, what's his name? The Red Ghost? Maybe? Kind of looks like the Joker. I don't know who anybody is. Lady and gentlemen, this is Smash Keys. He is the only human who's, he, he is the only human. He is the human who saved my daughter and the only one who has faced our common enemy in combat. Herr Brockhaus, what does the representative of the great dragon Lofer have to tell us about the magical insect this shadow runner? Yeah, he looks like a cross between the red ghost from Fantastic Four and maybe Sabretooth a little bit. Brockhaus speaks lowly with, with a deep, melodious German accent. He takes his time, accentuating each word, relishing each vowel and each consonant, tasting them. As if they were a delicacy. Well, come on now. My Lord Lofer has witnessed the insect spirit's physical manifestation before, roughly 9,000 years ago. As you are aware, magic ebbs and flows from the earth, cycling from peak to peak over the course of 5,200 years. As the level of magic grows... Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Harlequin. Hans, dear, I love you... But you could babble on forever, and I believe that time is of the essence. The painted elf addresses you. Smash keys, is it? Delighted. The bug you fought was not mere magically awakened animal like a wyvern or hydra or anything else in the sixth world. In fact, it isn't from this world at all. It's the physical embodiment of an insect spirit from another plane of existence. Are you kidding me? Transdimensional bug alien? Hmm. I imagined... I imagined that moving from one plane of existence to another isn't it easy. I imagine. Before you go on, I've got to ask, who the hell are you and why are you dressed like that? Is that why I couldn't kill it? Let's just be straight to the point, try not to get killed by these very scary men. Hey look, there's another hobgoblin. Exactly so, your little buggy friend exists on both planes simultaneously. Now an insect spirit can't simply thumb a ride through an astral plane, astral space, and show up on Earth late for dinner, dinner in this case being us. Two elements are required to bring one across the void, a shaman and a host. First, the spirit calls upon a shaman, often in dreams. The spirit seduces the shaman with promises of great power. The shaman then accepts the spirit as his totem. Next, the insect spirit requires a suitable host. The best candidates are the disaffected and the disenfranchised. In short, the weak-willed. Their minds are the most susceptible to suggestion, which is helpful in making the transformation. As you may imagine, these are the sort of people easily attracted to a cult, such as the Universal Brotherhood. Hmm. Finally, by performing what has to be truly a truly disgusting ritual, the shaman serving the insect totem implants the spirit into the host, willingly or not. Then it's feeding time. Oh my goodness. Harlea. Queen Iska. Is, 
East Godect. The insect spirit will then slowly consume its host while transforming into the spirit's own insectoid body, thus manifesting itself fully on this plane. What's that have to do with a great dragon? An elf who likes cosmetics. Whiz. Bugs from another dimension need killing? I get it. I don't like the sound of this. You shouldn't. It's bad. Really, really bad. The initial bugs prepare a nest for the summoning of a queen. Once a nest has its queen, she literally explodes with newly manifested insect spirits. They swarm out of the nest, feasting on all the flesh they can find and implanting more insect spirits into the fresh corpses, again and again and again. The room falls silent as they all consider this scenario. Faces grim, Telestrian breaks the silence. This is not an infestation, Smash Keys. It's an invasion. My Lord Lofer knew this day would come, but he did not know precisely when nor where. Your rescue of Mr. Telestrian's daughter has exposed the existence of an insect spirit for the first time in this cycle of the world. Then why don't you just fire a cruise missile at the Brotherhood and call it a day? So you're an early part of this time. That gives you the upper hand, right? We are not early. We, are, we merely have experience on our side. The insect spirit is only a resonant in the transformed host body. Conventional weapons can hurt the body and expose the spirits, but the spirit itself cannot be destroyed by mundane means. Hence, Project Aegis. Herr Telestri in Biotechnology and Agricultural Divisions worked with my Lord Lawfor's thaumaturgical engineers and designed Project Aegis to destroy an insect spirit once it is released from its host. The formula, a fluorescing astral bacteria strain, exists in the physical and astral pl plane at once, and thus can affect the insect spirit. Now that was a mouthful. Did you memorize it, or are you reading off an index cards? My director of R&D, Diane Ravenwood, will explain how to... Oh, I thought he was saying this is Diane Ravenwood. Kind of shirtless there, Diane. My director of R&D, Diane Ravenwood, will explain how Project Aegis will be used in the field. Dr. Ravenwood? Ooh! Got out of Pinkett Smith. Oh, there she is. Kind of got a little bit of red skin going on. Our weapons specialists have rapidly prototyped a delivery service for the fluorescing astrobacterial strain. They've created some prototype launchers which should fire Aegis-filled shells. When fired, the shells will discharge a high-velocity stream of the bacteria. In order to destroy one of the bugs, it must first be damaged using conventional weapons or magic until the spirit is released from the host body. Then the insect spirit must be shot with a Project Aegis prototype launcher to destroy it. So in order to stop an invasion of insects from another dimension, a dragon and an elf co-created a magical insecticide. Aegis is a multi-dimensional bug spray. Stomps bugs dead. Got it. Crudely put, but accurate. We must stop the Universal Brotherhood from summoning a queen, and we must stop them immediately. You are the only one who has been inside their facility, and the only one who has personally fought these creatures before. That, along with your highly effective assault on my property, indicates that you are an ideal person to lead the attack. Um, I'm, I'm flattered. The painted elf grins and his red lipstick catches the light. You should be. Come on, kid. When fate taps you on the shoulder, you've got to pay attention. Unfortunately, she has the nasty habit of tapping you on the opposite shoulder so that when you turn around, she's on the other side, giggling like a deranged schoolgirl. I hate that. Okay, I'm hanging out with crazy people. I really like this. This is really cool art. Enough. Are you willing to undergo this mission, Smash Keys? Mm, okay. You got me. You got me killing bugs. Show me how to use Aegis, and I'll get it done. I'm a professional. And professionals get paid for their work. I assume that serving all mankind involves compensation. Of course. Here's my proposal. If you prevent the queen from being summoned and destroy the insects in the next. One million new, new yen will be divided by the surviving team members. One million? One million? Sign me up. Excellent. I don't think he's going to pay me. Ain't no way he's going to pay me. He claps his hands of his seeing the circus for the first time. I love the way that the short-lived are willing to die even faster. It's very inspirational. Do elves live forever? A long time? Brackhouse raises his hand and Harlequin's clapping instantly stops. There is one final note, a warning, if you will. You have seen the danger the insects represent, but you have not witnessed the shaman's power. 
Pawa. The shaman must tap into a powerful source of magic in order to summon a queen. We do not know what abilities that power source will grant. Beware of the insects, but do not underestimate the shaman. Oh, ten grand. Hey, don't scare the kid, Hansel. We need, we still need him to go on the mission. By the by, I'm coming with you, Smash Keys. I wouldn't mind seeing the creatures for myself. I missed them last time. Telestrian will bankroll you so you can hire the rest of the team. Find me when you're ready to go, and we'll bug right out of here. <laughs> he sighs. Yes, speak with Harlequin when you are ready to depart. If you wish to acquire additional supplies for your mission, find my assistant, Quoth. He is highly resourceful. Hmm. I leveled up. Well, that's probably a good little place to take a break, though, hey? Gonna head off and fight, fight these unkillable bugs. Hopefully kill the unkillable bugs and save the entire human race. Well, metahuman. All the people. All the races on all the earth. Thank you for watching, people. You've been watching Smash Keys playing Shadowrun Returns. And I hope to see you again soon. You have a nice day.